All right, class, Mr. Whipple here. <clears throat> We've got uh, next unit, hard work, and here we go. You have learned about the changes in America's geography in the 1800s as the United States grew in size. <clears throat> Excuse me. As pioneers moved west into new lands, changes were also taking place in the Northeast. In fact, a revolution was happening. This was not a political revolution. Instead, this revolution brought huge changes in work, society, and the home. It is called the Industrial Revolution. In colonial times, most work was done in homes and small businesses. Craftspeople learned specific trades and created things for their families and communities. There might be blacksmiths, woodworkers, bakers, or even shoemakers. These craftspeople provided for local needs. Local needs. The Industrial Revolution changed this way of life. New inventions were created and factories were built. These factories made goods faster and shipped them to places beyond the local communities. Craftspeople were no longer the center of the community. Daily life was changing. In 1790, the first factory was built in America in Pawt the first factory built in America in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. <clears throat> this factory was built by Samuel Slater and it ran out of water power and created textiles or fabric. Slater had immigrated from England after working in a cotton mill. When he arrived in the United States, he built the factory and began producing fabric. With a large factory, he needed workers. He turned to families. He built places for families to live called tenements and put all the members of the family to work. Can you imagine being a child and working in a factory? Children were used to working on farms at a young age, but factories were different. They had to work long days inside, often with little light from the outside. When it came time to get paid, men made the most money. Women usually made about half what men made, and children made even less. Textile factories were just the beginning. Other types of factories were also being built, including steel, flour mills, ironworks, and even printing. Workers in a factory would do one specific job over and over again. It was very efficient and built things faster, but it was also very boring to the workers. Factory workers worked long hours, very little pay. Advances in transportation also helped the Industrial Revolution. Factories needed a way to transport all the goods to towns and cities far away. The new canals, roads, and railroads moved goods faster than ever before. They also made it possible to transport large quantities. Factories produced many different goods to meet new demands all over the country. That's it.